Good morning, friends. <clears throat> Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. I understand that Vimeo might not have changed what it projected the time to be. This always starts at 8 a.m. Pacific time. And the clock's changed over the weekend. But I see it saying it's going to start at 7 a.m. every week. It's not going to. <laughs> it's going to stay with the time that we're, we're settled on. But what I want to work on today is dulcimer workarounds. Uh, let me turn down my speaker there. This was a, a topic that was suggested by um, one of our faithful Wednesday followers and participants, Jim Fry from, from uh, Colorado. And what um, this is a phrase that I was introduced to early because when I was trying to understand how the dulcimer worked, I noticed that it didn't do everything I was used to on a piano keyboard or guitar fretboard that has all the, all the frets evenly, relatively evenly spaced. I was playing a dulcimer and you can see it's got these long, long, short, long, long, short, long, 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 short, long, long, short, long, 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 short. That's the diatonic framework. That's that's as if we only have white keys on the piano. And so when I was trying to play music, sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. For example, right now in my um, Advent evening prayer class, we're doing Abide With Me. And this is my first dulcimer, the one I built in 1980. No, it's not the right one. Um, <laughs> that's because this is one of those hymn tunes that goes and borrows something from another key. So I was confronted right away with what do I do? Well, you saw what I tried to do first. I tried to bend. That's always an option on a stringed instrument. If you don't have the note you're looking for, you can bend the one below the one you want in the direction of what you want and bending two strings, it was impossible to get them to bend in tune. So then I tried to bend the middle string, which in this case, I was in a one, five, five tuning DAA. I needed a G sharp and it's just not on the instrument. So I could bend to get it from an A or from a <clears throat> G to a G sharp, but it didn't fit the character of the song. So what I ended up doing was I used the note, instead of going, instead of playing the wrong note, I played a note that was in the same chord, but it was the other direction. Lord, with me abide. And that's the only time it showed up in the whole song. So that was my way of working around the dulcimer workaround on a mountain dulcimer that had no extra frets. Well, sometime in the 60s, a guy named Howie Mitchell, Don Petty calls this the Howie Mitchell fret. If you can, you might not be able to see the best here, but we do some comparison on this in dulcimer crossing. But where we have long, long, short, long, long, short, long, 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 short on the dulcimers that are built these days, unless you specifically ask not to have it, it says long, long, short, long, long, short, short, short. Oh, they added one in here, and it's the one that's in between. We don't renumber the whole dulcimer. We call that a six and a half fret. And that six and a half fret lets me have the note I was looking for. built in because the six and a half adds that step in the scale. And so it let me do both things I wanted to do by adding a fret. 
Now, people have gone on, and many times today, people add, let's see if I can get this in here, a one and a half fret as well. So instead of having a long, long short, they have a long, short, short, short. And that lets you... That gives us an extra note here that we wouldn't normally have on the instrument. <clears throat> in an instrument, in a dulcimer that doesn't have the one and a half fret tuned DAA or DAD, we'd never have an F natural anywhere on the instrument. We do have a C natural on the bass string, but now because of this one and a half fret, we have a C natural in the middle string, plus we've picked up an F natural on the outside strings as well. So it gives us some other opportunities opportunities. I was just talking with someone who has a, uh, uh, a group of musicians who play all the time and a young student who want, who is teaching all the other young students to play dulcimer. And they want to be able to play in the keys of D, G, A, and C. And she wanted to know the one tuning that'll work for all that. Well, without an one and a half fret, and I doubt if these children all have instruments with one and a half frets, without that, there is no one tuning that lets you do all that because there's never an F available to play in the key of C. So then you have to do the dulcimer workarounds. You can play partial chords also. You can play all the notes you, you need to suggest that chord if you don't have the chord. Now, how does that apply to the hammer dulcimer? Depending on the size of your hammer dulcimer, Like this is a pretty large one. So many, let's see if I should back out just a little bit. Yeah, I should zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole instrument. So an instrument that's a 12, 11 or something like that would start here with a G. And usually go up to about this. A 13-12 is going to go up, I'm going to have a 1, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's going to be from G up to an E, typically. 15-14 uh, is not going to go quite as high. It's going to start on a D. And they won't have any change stuff up there. A 1615 will start in the same place, but have an extra bridge up here to go from a low E to a high D. So, so we actually have a D, a D, a D, a D, a D, a D, four octaves of the note D. In a 1615, we've also got four notes, four octaves of the note E. And uh, in a 1615 chromatic one, you can see there's these little bridge caps that are a little slightly off. That allows us to have it allows us to have all the chromatic notes up here. Now hammer dulcimers are are pretty um, pretty uh, chromatic. Uh, but not in the way, not in the way of what we want to do. So the, the workarounds here, I might have an instrument that doesn't have these high notes up here, or I need the C sharp that's in this, uh, this higher octave and I might not have that note. And so what can I do? Well, one suggestion is in the middle of what you're playing, uh, in need that C sharp up there. And I just repeat this one. <laughs> just remember that I don't have it up here, so I could play it an octave lower and let the overtones carry it. And in the context of the song, it's usually, this is usually when we're borrowing a note from another key for a minute. 
And so using it in a different octave is a way to go. Um, you could just, if it's a fast song, this is the, you could do the same as the mountain dulcimer work, work around. And just skip that one and double up on the A or the E if you don't have the C sharp somewhere. Now I'm using C sharp as an example, but you might have another, another note somewhere that you're not able to use in, or you don't have available to you. So what I'm doing when I'm doing that workaround is finding a note that's part of that chord that will not disturb the, the tonality of the whole song I'm playing. It will be supportive. It will not be an exact transcription of what was written on the page for a chromatic instrument, but it is an adaptation. So that's kind of what uh, overall a dulcimer workaround is. Now, let me see if you have any questions or further things that you want to uh, comment on here. Hi, Rusty. How are you? Now, let me let me just go back because I we talked about the fact that mountain dulcimers are diatonic instruments and there are certain notes in different tunings that are just not available to us anymore. Hammer dulcimers are chromatic instruments, but they're laid out in a diatonic way. So let's use the example of G because that's the one that even smaller instruments are going to have. I have a G, A, B, C, D, F sharp, G, all the notes I'm going to need for a G scale. And all I did was start on a marked chorus. That's going to be the same anywhere I go, starting on a marked chorus. If I play in the box, I'm going to have the major scale of whatever marked chorus I started on. What if I need a chromatic scale? I need a G sharp. It's over here. It's out of the way, and it's still present. G sharp, A flat. Now, a lot of instruments, I've got this extra box down here. You may not have that, but I do. G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp. of being a three bridge pattern in order to get all the chromatic notes that I want to play. This is a really good exercise for hammered ultimate players. Say I want to play in C, but I want to play chromatically. C, D, E, F, G. There's my diatonic scale. I need a C sharp, D sharp, E, F, F. Between the unmarked and the marked course, always a half step. That's always E, e sharp is the same as F. E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C. And a column by sharp names going up, C sharp, D sharp, B. Using flat names coming down is a good way to get oriented to the enharmonic scale. C, D, flat, A, flat, G, flat, F, E, flat, B, flat, C. Now our chromatic tuners, like this snark right here, is going to register that as an A sharp. I don't think it's bright enough for you to see it, but I can see it. That note is called an A sharp. Usually when we talk about them, it's a B flat. And A sharp and B flat are the same, are the same pitch. But it's about the orientation of where are we, what key are we playing in, what makes them, what is the best description of what we're using for where we are. So the dulcimer workarounds, <clears throat> excuse me. The most expensive one is to buy a new instrument. <laughs> the second most expensive is to have a luthier add notes that you don't have. 
this is for mountain dulcimers, um, by adding a fret. Um, the, there is one other way, and that is <clears throat> retuning to a chromatic tuning. There's my A. So now I'm in the tuning F, A, C, F on the bass, A in the middle, C natural, and that lets me have, so I have F, G, sharp, or A flat, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp or E flat, E. E, uh, e natural, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, A, B flat, B, C, and I can continue up. I've got all the chromatic notes here because I've retuned. I've got more because I'm using an instrument with a one and a half fret. But if I didn't have the one and a half fret and I tuned to this, this I would have chromatic for most of the instrument. And this is actually... is actually a very useful tuning for us to be able to play in jazz using fake books playing in the keys that the songs are played by everyone else so you can come and sit in you don't have to change everything to be back in d which is one thing that we often do um, or often expect and it makes us more more uh, conversant and a more versatile player and someone who is more welcomed into places where we don't expect to be welcomed now, on the hammer dulcimer, when I talked about we're not add, asking someone to add a bridge that doesn't exist, we can get a bigger instrument. So we have a broader range. And that gives me in this lower octave in my instrument that would stop here with no bass bridge. Oops, I forgot. I didn't change my camera. And an instrument that stops here, 1615 or 1615 chromatic. This low B flat, I would not have because I can't get down. It's present because I've got this extra box here. So what some builders have done is add another bridge on this side that includes those missing notes. So there would be a G, an A, a B flat, a, uh, and a C. And there might be an F over here and a D sharp. If there's just three on this side, it's usually... The D sharp that's in between here, the F that's in, in between here, and then the B flat. This bridge keeps on going and adds several more notes because of this other octave that I have here. So that's one way. Another way is to retune the notes you need for a specific reason. So this is normally a C sharp, a C sharp, but because of what I was playing on that particular day, I retuned my C sharp to be a C natural. I retuned my F sharp to be an F natural. Now I retuned it and it's not, it's not happy. One of the things that happens on a hammer dulcimer is if you retune things, they don't like it too much. You gotta spend extra time with them. You gotta tune them a lot because they get you, like all of us, they're, they're just like humans. We get, we get set in the way we wanna be and we don't wanna change for nothing, <laughs> for not for love nor money. Um, but the thing about playing dulcimers for me that I love is they require and they teach flexibility. I have people take the dulcimer pledge with me. <laughs> I am flexible. I am versatile. I can retune. And that's uh, on the dulcimer crossing site. A lot of people don't want to. I found that to be a good way to go. However, in the mountain dulcimer world, if you are, uh, I'm going to share my screen.
if you are someone who likes to play a lot of chromatic instruments, we have chromatic dulcimer lessons on dulcimer crossing. Aramay Lewis is one of the people who is very visible. Sam Edelson does this. Stephen Seifert does this. There are others as well, but these are the, the most visible ones that I'm aware of. But she's got a series of lessons about uh, chromatic instrument, how to play chromatic mountain dulcimer. And uh, she's got a great chromatic chord book that she's published as well. And if you go to Aaron May Music, you'll find that. Okay, so an example of a tune, thanks Jim, I missed that earlier. An example of a tune is what happens when you're playing uh, a tune that goes below Do in a key that you don't have the other notes for. Let's see, I never play Ricketts Hornpipe in G, so I'm going to have to think for a minute. That's one that starts... I never played on hammer dulcimer. I always played on mountain dulcimer. So let me check for a minute. There we go. Da 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 da. And I have to get to the F sharp below G. That's why you said G. Yeah. If you don't have the G over the G over here to get the F sharp. Jim, your soprano might have that issue. Yeah, the 1211. And I'm playing as if I have a smaller instrument and I don't have this note here. So what are my options? I just doubled up on that note instead of... chord tones, I can use the same one, or I can use a different one, and but I fill the same amount of space. I, I don't just leave an open uh, hanging, hanging uh, space in there. If it's a tune that's going really fast, I might be able to just skip that one and go on, and the hearer will insert the note that was missing. That's that musical magic that can happen with that uh, we can experience. Um, I do want to also say that the registration for the North Georgia Foothills Festival, North Georgia Foothills Dulcimer Association Festival, let me get that up here so I can share it. Wow. North Georgia Foothills. Here it is. Here is the website. The red the deadline for registrations is coming up this Saturday.
Um, the tuning that I use for jazz is FAC. Which is very easy to get to. You tune DAC and then you raise your bass string up to F. I am teaching uh, 10 workshops at the North Georgia Foothills. And I think I still have opening in all of the workshops. Uh, since everything went online, people have been very vigorous in choosing workshops. And so it's not the, uh, there isn't the, the rush. If you've got shut out of some of the things I've taught before, this is a good, good time to, to sign up for those. You're welcome. <clears throat> and I am teaching a class on this then, the FAC tuning. Uh, let's, let me just look and make sure that I'm not telling you fib. Modes. Yep, I'm teaching, let's see, what I wish I knew when I started Hammer Dulcimer, modes in the Hammer Dulcimer, Hammer Dulcimer Joy, which is taking Beethoven's Ode to Joy and using variations, using your dulcimer to sing with children, that's Mountain Dulcimer, Noter Style Mountain Dulcimer, Dulcimer Right Hand Patterns, DAA Chord Melody Style in Mountain Dulcimer, DGD Mountain Dulcimer, Mountain Dulcimer Joy, and Plain Bluegrass. I That's why I'm not doing the jazz one at this one. That's right. All right, so I'm glad I caught myself before I made a promise that I couldn't keep. Well, as always, if you want to send topics, thank you, Jim, for sending this topic. I don't know if I answered all the questions you had there, but if you want to suggest topics for future live streams, you can send them to me here, steve at dulcimercrossing.com, and they'll go into the hopper. And just as uh, I told you before, I was almost ready to show you a preview, but we're not we're not there yet. There's uh, still a lot going on backstage. We're doing a big shift at Dulcimer Crossing, and uh, we're excited about what's coming. But it isn't ready to to give any tours yet. Okay, Talon, great question. We talked about skin and bones, and I was capo one, and I was playing in E minor. That's what I was doing. Now on the Saturday group, when they were doing it in DAC, they were using the same set of numbers on the scale because when i capoed at at the first fret it gave me the aeolian mode one to eight is always on a mountain dulcimer for the aeolian mode the one two flat three four five flat six flat seven eight the steps of the scale but if you tried to play the dac while i'm playing dad with a capo at one they won't sound the sound together very well because one will be an e and one will be in d and they'll they won't agree, but that's why, that's why it worked because you were moving from one to eight because you tuned to DAC, you've changed your one to be the D and C is the note below do. The benefit of playing without the, by retuning is you get that note below do. You can go da, 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 but when you tune to DA, when you capo DAD at one, you have to go to the middle string to get that note. It's there, but you have to go to the middle string. And yes, the chord fingering is going to be different. So, and so, yes, you're right. The melody string is the same like in DGD and DAA. They compare to each other by the fact that you're using the melody string from three to 10 in DGD. But there it sounds from G to G. If you're tuned to DAA, your third fret is D and you're going to D at the 10th fret. So, yes, you've made a good connection. Well done. <laughs>
Well, the clock has turned to the hour, the half hour. Um, I've got to see why this publicized that it was going to be at a different time than it actually is. So I've got to figure that out on the Vimeo side. But it is good to be with you today. And I will be back next week with a new topic. Thanks to Jim for the topic that you suggested today. And I look forward to your other suggestions. Oh, what is a disadvantage to the chromatic mountain dulcimer? Yeah, I got to I got to tell you that. <laughs> I don't have a chromatic mountain dulcimer. Oh, I do. I have a cardboard one that's a chromatic fretboard because I wanted to work on that. The, the benefits is that you have all of the notes. And so you can take a shape and just slide it down by half steps. And um, there's, there's a lot of benefit of that. The confusion for a lot of people, one of the things about playing a guitar is I spend a lot of time thinking about what note, what frets to avoid. On a mountain dulcimer, I just go to the next one because it's usually going to be in the key that I'm looking for, with the exception of these notes that are part of songs that cross the keys a little bit. <clears throat> the other thing is when you're playing noter style, when you go from a diatonic, a whole step to a whole step, you hear things that stay in the key you're in. If you're sliding over chromatic frets, it's a different sound. So it may be something you like, but it's going to be different sliding over all the half steps and sliding over the whole steps if you're playing in the noter style. Um, Erin May actually designed her chord book for people who are thinking of their instrument as a diatonic fretboard with extra frets and people who are thinking about it more like a guitar fretboard with 12 steps. So she's talking about it in two different ways at the same time. Um, some people have decided it makes more sense in their head to think about it in the chromatic way and others stay in the dulcimer way, which is seven tones plus extra stuff. And they think about it that way. So she teaches uh, both directions. Thanks, I'd forgotten about that piece. And to speak about that, um, James Jones has done an interlinear chromatic hammer dulcimer. There they are. Where he keeps the, he, he's expanded the, the distance and he's added between the mark and the first unmark and the two unmarks, he's added another course that's got a brass covering. So I'd have my D, D sharp, slash E flat, E, F natural, F sharp, G. And on this side, it'd be A, A sharp, or the B flat, B, C natural, and then C sharp and B, <clears throat> called interlinear. And I've played on one of those before. I didn't play it a lot, but I did play on it. It was very interesting. It was very cool. And I could very easily take the patterns that I was used to in all the major keys and slide them up or down and play in the flat or the sharp keys. Uh, one of the things that Dan Landrum said is that he found it useful for playing things that um, not fiddle tunes. He would play it for other things, not the things he already knew. He would use the interlinear chromatic for the the other songs that he wanted to play but not the ones he already knew so well it has come to that time and i need to transition my studio here for my kids class which comes up at the top of the hour and i so that it's time for that it's just the clock does what the clock does and i follow it because i'm a slave to time <laughs> well i look forward to seeing you next time it's good to be with you today and I wish you all the best. Don't forget, you can write to me uh, with your suggestions for follow-up questions. Um, I'm, this is archived on the Dulcimer Crossing site. It's archived in the uh, Vimeo site for Dulcimer Crossing. It's also archived on YouTube in the Dulcimer Crossing page and on the Dulcimer Crossing Facebook page. So come, come by and uh, see any or all of those. But for now, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you all.